here from Plans Meet Paper, and today I wanted to come on and talk to you guys about my 2019 planner setup and the inserts that I'm using. Uh, today I'm actually just going to do kind of a part one video where I talk just about the inserts that I'm using and the reason why I'm using them and kind of my thought process going into this new year with my new planner. So this planner is a personal size Malden Filofax in the color ochre. And this planner is actually just holding my extra inserts. So I'm gonna be walking you through kind of what some blank inserts that I'm using for 2019 look like. And that's gonna be this part one is just talking you through the different inserts that I'm using and why I find them helpful. I actually have these same inserts also in two other sizes, both the A5 size file effects. I use half letter inserts in my A5 file effects. And then also in the pocket size file effects as well. So I'm just showing you in the personal size, but I actually have the same inserts for these two planners as well. And uh, if you've seen any of my planner videos in the past, you probably know that uh, in general, I am a one planner girl. Uh, I like to have everything all in one place. It just works best with my mind. I find that I get a little bit less scatterbrained and I f lose less things if I keep it all in one place. And so that's why I usually keep all of my planning in one planner at a time. Uh, but this year, 2019, uh, I have a lot of changes coming in my life. Uh, if you follow my channel, you probably have seen that I am pregnant and I'm due with my first child here in about a month and a half. And so uh, we're really looking forward to meeting our little boy and um, becoming parents, my husband and I. But with that comes a lot of changes and a lot of unknowns for me. And so with all of those changes and things that are kind of going on in my life, I had a hard time setting up my planner for 2019. I didn't know what size I wanted to use. I didn't know what pages I wanted to use. I didn't know what I would need and what would be too much for me. I just felt like there were so many unknowns. It was very hard for me to figure out a good system for this coming year. And so basically what I did is I created some new pages, a new kind of insert pack uh, which has some of my kind of tried and true pages that I've been using for years and then also some new pages in it and I created these insert packs that have basically kind of just the bare bones, the basics of what I need in any planner setup, uh, the things that I need just to keep my head on and keep myself you know prepared and ready to go um, so I'm not missing appointments and I'm not letting all those little daily tasks kind of get on top of me. So those are the pages that I'm going to be using this year primarily are just kind of those bare bones, really bringing it back to the basics type planner layouts. Um, basically what really appealed to me in 2019 is kind of a little bit more of like a bullet journal type setup. Um, <laughs> and you're gonna laugh because you're probably looking at this planner saying that's not a bullet journal That's a ring binder and those pages are printed. So there's nothing bullet journal about that <laughs> um, But what I mean by that is basically I find that people who do bullet journaling uh, Or at least a lot of the people that I like to watch on YouTube who do bullet journaling uh, They let the pages kind of flow throughout the year with what they need them to be. And also they, uh, it's super kind of a minimalist type planning world. Um, you don't need a lot of supplies. You don't need to uh, always have a bunch of different separate inserts printed out or order a bunch of separate inserts. It can kind of just be simple. Um, the pages are flexible and you can use them to meet your own needs. Um, and that's really what I wanted. However, I do not like to draw out my own layouts like with a pen because I'm kind of OCD <laughs> and when I try to draw straight lines with a pen, even if I use a ruler, 
it just, you know, it'll get slightly off or uneven and that drives me crazy. So I wanted kind of that freedom and flexibility of the bullet journal style of planning um, with pre-printed <laughs> uh, layouts essentially. So layouts that were super basic, super flexible to be used for different types of things in my life, but um, layouts that could, you know, make it so I don't have to actually spend time drawing um, squares or grid or anything onto blank paper. So that is kind of the why of why I created these new pages and why I'm using them in my planner. Um, as far as the other sizes, both my A5 and my personal size, uh, I wasn't even sure what size I wanted to use this year. I tried out the pocket last year for the first time in 2018, and I really like the portability of it, um, and it's just so light and fun to carry with you, um, but I just wasn't sure if I would have enough space to track all of the appointments coming up and like things that I would need to track with a new baby in this small of a size. So that's why I wasn't positive about the pocket. Um, A5, I absolutely adore. <laughs> this is kind of where I started in my planning. I love white space, so I love the size of the pages in an A5. And I think that there's a very good chance that I could end up in this size later on in this year. Um, it's not as portable, which uh, again, for like appointments and things like that, it's a little bit more of a pain to have a bigger binder like this. But I am gonna be home a lot more this year, um, staying home with our new baby. So I could definitely see myself switching into this bigger size. And so I wanted to have the option of having my exact same planner pages totally ready to go in a different size so that my planner and my system can stay the same but the size of the planner can kind of flow throughout the year depending on what I need. So that is kind of the background. And then I'm just gonna kind of go through and show you. Basically this planner pack includes 12 different layouts. I was shooting for 10 originally, 10 simple layouts that could cover everything I need in my planner. <laughs> um, but I actually came out with about with 12. So um, this planner pack, which I call kind of the planner basics or the minimalist planner pack, um, in my mind that's what I call it at least and that's what it's called in my Etsy shop, which I will link down below. Uh, but basically these are the 12 layouts that come with it. You've got a really simple monthly grid and you can see it is undated. So I like to write my dates in the bottom right-hand corner, which is kind of weird. <laughs> I know most people do top left. Um, so I left it totally simple so you can write the date wherever you want. Um, I even use these monthly layouts, these monthly grids, to make uh, like monthly plans sometimes. So that would mean I wouldn't date it at all. So for instance, like um, if I'm doing a plan for how I want to do my zone cleaning, for a whole month um, and how I want that to go each month of the year. I would just do that um, totally undated and then I wouldn't have to rewrite it for different months. I can just use it as kind of a monthly plan as a, in addition to an actual monthly layout. So that is the monthly page that I'm using, Basic Grid. And to save space in my rings this year, I printed mine back to back. So each month, leads directly into the next month. But um, since these are printable pages, I could easily change my mind on that and just print a month with like lined paper on the back. Um, and that would be totally fine too. That way it would have, you know, I could put my months and my weeks together if I didn't want them separated later on in the year. So that's my monthly page to go in the middle. I am going to be using this monthly tracker, which this is a 31 day monthly tracker. And so it's got a place to put different habits or tasks that I want to do every day. And then um, 31 spots to mark out which days of the month that I actually get those tasks done. So I plan to keep this right in the middle of my month and that way I can track my habits for each month. 
Um, I also, on the back, I just have lined paper. That's what I printed on the back here of my monthly habit tracker. And that's where I'm gonna kinda put my goals, my monthly to-do list. I like to have the goals with my monthly tracker because I think that those two things should be connected. Uh, I like to make sure that the things that I'm tracking throughout my month connect to my goals and that um, I'm really working towards making progress on those. And so that is going to be my monthly tracker or daily tracker, just any sort of tracker really. I've also got another monthly layout that I've really been enjoying. This is a month on one page vertical. It's also kind of undated in that it can be used for any month of any year. It's just 31 lines and it has a title up at the top where you can put what month it is. And I'm using this one um, for future planning. So I have one of these in there for any month that I don't actually have set up yet. So like the second half of the year, I've just got one of these month on one pages. And that way I can still mark out important dates and birthdays and days that need to be marked off. Um, but I don't have to bulk up my planner with having um, all of my pages in for the whole year at once. So I like to use it for that. The other thing that I can see myself using this page for throughout the year is monthly meal planning. If I do get to a point where I actually can plan out a whole month at a time, which I would love to get to, that's kind of a, a goal for me at some point, um, I would plan out my meals for the month on this page. Uh, I also really like to do like a daily gratitude for the month where you mark that down. And so this is just a super flexible page, just a month on one page vertical that can go with lots of different things throughout the year. So those are my monthly layouts. Also in my Planner Basics pack, I just have a super simple weekly insert. So it's just a week on one page with lined paper. And so that's how it looks each week, uh, a week on one page, lined paper. It is a Monday start, and I'm using this just to keep track of uh, appointments and tasks that are day specific for each week. And then on the lined paper on the other side is where I plan to do my to-do lists and notes and everything for the week. I also have a couple different options for kind of daily pages, but again, they're multifunctional inserts, so they're not specific to just being a daily page. And that's what I really like about this kind of minimalist style of page is I can use these for all sorts of different things. So this one is a two column lined paper and I would use this for doing two days on a page. So it's not quite a daily page. It takes up a little bit less space than that, but I could put Monday and Tuesday on this first side, Wednesday and Thursday on the back, so on and so forth. And then I also have a different two column style layout, which I'll show you. This one is a two column layout, but it has a title at the top. So this one I would use for an actual single daily page. So I would just put Monday with the date at the top, and then maybe on one side of the page I do, would do a schedule, on the other side I would do a to-do list, or um, maybe my work tasks and my home tasks. Uh, lots of different ideas for using this as a daily page. Um, but these two column inserts, you'll see them kind of pop up throughout my planner as well, throughout the rest of the tabs of different types of things that I'm using them for. So I don't just use them for daily pages, I use them for lists, um, grocery lists, trackers, all sorts of stuff throughout the planner. So I really like those two column layouts. Those have probably been my favorite. Um, this year so far. Okay, another different weekly layout. This one is technically, I call it a week on, or two weeks on one page, but it could also just be a single week with two columns on, on a page. Uh, lots of different ways to use it. Currently, how I'm using it is as a meal planner, but I've also used it before as a way to separate my home events and tasks and my work events and tasks 
for a single week on one page. So I like that version of the two column weekly as well. Uh, this section is technically where I'm kind of doing my, these are my refills for my home or my kind of fly lady control journal type uh, section in my planner. So that's where I'm doing my meal planning. I've also got some more of my two column layouts in here because I use those for grocery lists every week. I like to usually go to more than one store, so I'll put my Costco list on one side and my King Supers list on the other side or vice versa. And that way I can just separate it out but have it all on one page and ready to go. Another layout that I am using here in my planner this year is a yearly tracker. So again, this is just a way to keep track of tasks that don't need to get done like every day or every week, but you do wanna just keep track of when, they're, when they are getting done. So I use this for my bill tracking, I use this for zone cleaning, I use this for uh, any odds and ends kind of maintenance tasks. So things like uh, putting powder on the roof to keep the mold from growing, washing the cars, um, getting an oil change, anything that is just kind of sporadic throughout the year that I still need to track, I use these yearly trackers for. And again, I left them just super wide open. I didn't put in titles or anything because that way you can let it flow and use this layout for whatever it's gonna be helpful for for you throughout the year. So really liking that minimalist style again. Another two column layout that I'm using in my planner is this kind of uneven two column. So it's got a small column on the left and then a larger column on the right. And this is another one that I found to be super multifunctional. Uh, right now, I'm using it for my project planning. So I put my timeline for my project over here on the left, and then the tasks that that project breaks down into on the right. I'm also using it to track my appointments. So I just put the appointment date, and then all the information I need to keep track of about questions and uh, outcomes and everything on the right. Um, I also use it for just like to-do lists because it's like a nice column to check off. So I really like this kind of small, large column layout as well. I've got basic lined paper. I think that's a necessity in any planner. So I just have basic lined note paper. And then a couple other column layouts and these ones are uh, landscape orientation sorry I've got my tab in the way there or my popper so these are landscape orientation so you can see this one has three columns and they're all even and I like the landscape orientation for planner pages sometimes because it gives you more space to write in each line I always use landscape orientation in my planner when I'm writing out my passwords because it gives me more space to write out what the account name is, the username, and then the password hint. I also like to use these for gift ideas um, and kind of cards that I need to send, anything where I just need a little bit more space per line in order to fit all the information. So I've got this version, which is three even columns. And then I also have one that is a little bit more uneven. So this is the one that I actually use the most for like gift ideas and cards. So I would put the person's name over here, all the information about what idea I have for their gift in the middle, and then either the price or check it off once I've purchased it kind of thing on the right. And again, these layouts are totally uh, open-ended. They don't have titles or anything and that allows me to use them for different things throughout the year without having to print out new inserts, which is just super convenient. Okay, and then lastly, all of my personal size inserts, this is just specific for personal. Uh, the paper that does not get used for the actual inserts, uh, this is kind of the wasted paper, so to say. This is the middle section. 
And I always save that because I don't like to waste paper. So I save it and I just use it for anything in my planner, lists, um, kind of scratch work, um, brain dumps, anything where I just need a piece of paper that I'm gonna end up throwing away after I've used it. That is what I use these little scraps for. And I even put them into my other sizes of planners. Sometimes I just punch different holes. <laughs> so that's just at the back. But those are all of the different inserts that I'm gonna be using in my 2019 setup. And that's kind of the before the pen version for you guys to see what they look like. And I'm gonna be doing a part two video here next where I will show you how it actually is turning out in my planner this year so far. So uh, stay tuned, watch that second video if you wanna see my 2019 planner setup. Thanks for watching, bye.